She is a young koi fish in 18 centimeters size, and she's still a baby. What I want to say is, this is the best example of how the body structure of a potential koi fish in the future. Look at how long she is, but on her chest and back it seems to expand. Yes, this is an example of the potential bone structure of a baby koi fish that will grow to be a giant. You just need to provide good feed for maximum growth, and fish with a body structure like this will give satisfying results. There is a time for everything, be patient my friend. Look at a baby koi as a baby koi in its current state. A good baby koi is a baby koi that has a long body. Baby koi will generally look slim, maybe even skinny. However, it is only then that we can get a good look at its bone structure. There are three points that you need to pay attention to from the baby koi bone structure. First, the bones of the head. Second, the development of the hump. Third, the base of the tail on the head. What needs to be considered is a matter of ideal size. A big head does not mean big bones, because it can lead to a composition that is not ideal. The size of the head must be sufficient, not too small, not too pointy either, which definitely should look thick and plump. Neither sunken head, nor mouth oblique downwards. The shape must also be ideal. The hump of a baby koi should indicate development will enlarge. That is, he must display some sort of build-up of supple potential in his humps, appear muscular, or rather, exhibit muscular potential. Like a baby pit bull. He doesn't have to look fat, but has to look potentially muscular. The base of the tail of a baby koi should not be sharp and thin. The base of the tail should be thick and sturdy because it shows the strength of fish bones supporting and pushing its body. The strong and thick base of the tail will be able to push its giant body later. However, the thin base of the tail would not be able and willing to support the body of a giant koi. Fish are bony, and ornamental pond fish are no exception, as you'll see in the pond fish anatomy diagram. Unlike the bones of sharks and stingrays, their bones are truly bones and not cartilage. The bones of a fish are not meant for bearing weight because, in water, the fish is pretty much weightless. The two principal stresses on the fish's bones are hydrostatic pressure from the water and the push and pull of the fish's mighty muscles on those bones. That's why, when you net a fish and carry it in that net, you're putting a unique force on their skeleton which can damage them. The fish is bent into a U-shape and its full weight torques the skeletal bones. Broken backs are a common result. Instead, use your net to catch the fish and then slide a big plastic bowl under the fish to carry it. If a fish suffers from a broken back, the cure is simply time. The fish may compensate for the injury, even if crooked from that day on, or it may simply starve to death. About the hump, actually I would like to see what is everyone's opinion on shoulder humps on koi. I have seen it written and have heard judges talk about how it is an indicator of large bone structure and future growth. I have also seen opinions that they don't like the humps and that it can be a sign of an overfed koi. Also for those that like the humps, when should you start to see it on koi that are going to be jumbo size? Is there an age that might be premature or if seen in later age koi can it be a sign of later growth? Some people said that, the notion that a hump is a sign of future growth is not accurate. I have had more than one grow to only moderate size. I also have not noted any correlation with the bone structure possessed by koi that do grow very large. To the contrary, I'd say there is a tendency for young koi destined to grow large not to have a hump. My observation has been that an enlarged shoulder hump comes from high quantities of food, particularly during periods when the fish is not putting on length. The hump develops from the storage of fat. 
When the koi is in a period of rapid growth, it puts nutritional energy into growth over fat deposition. To create an enlarged hump, feed heavily when the water is in the low to mid 60 SF. In that temperature range, the fish eats very well and has good metabolism, but growth in length is stymied. The excess nutrition is stored as fat. Of course, feeding heavily on a constant basis encourages development of an enlarged shoulder hump. I have been taught that a moderate shoulder hump on otherwise high-quality koi is acceptable, but the ideal conformation is a gradual slope from the nose to the tail from all angles of view, including a side view looking at the top and bottom curve of the body. So in my opinion a high-quality koi with a significant shoulder hump would be even better if it had a more gradual sloping shoulder. Regarding show-quality koi, the goal is refinement of all traits like conformation, skin, color and pattern versus the less refined types of genetic expression. When buying a koi carp of any size, it is important to look for a decent body and head shape that are in proportion with each other. However, a fat koi isn't necessarily a koi with good shape, there is a little more to it than that. It is also important to bear in mind that koi don't usually have good volume at a small size, and that a koi will build its frame bone structure as it grows. Buying a small koi will always be a little more difficult than buying a bigger two or three year old. To help you understand body shape we have split it into several areas, all of which have equal bearing on the size potential of the koi and how impressive it will be when it is bigger. Studying a koi's head and understanding what constitutes a good shape is made easier by comparing it to the other fish in the bowl. A good head will be broad and long, with a wide mouth, and the eyes set a good distance apart and not close to the mouth. It is quite common to see koi that have a narrow or short head, with the eyes being too close to the mouth. 
Such koi will seldom get big and should be avoided. Another aspect to look for is the underside of the cheeks of the koi. The profile of the cheekbone should be free of defects. Also make sure that the gill covers follow the same smooth line as the overall head shape, and don't stand proud, bulge or flare outwards just before the body. Jitai. Jitai means, height, and quite literally refers to the height of the body of the fish. Don't be fooled that a hump behind the head is a good thing, as this isn't jitai and has no bearing on size. Jitai is the height of the body of the koi between the back of the head and the highest point of the body. A good strong curve up over the back of the koi is a good attribute and a key factor in determining size potential, as well as helping determine the kind of body shape the koi will develop. Also, when looking at jitai, you will often see that it is prominent in such a way that it looks as if the koi will be able put on more weight in the shoulder area. This can help you understand the way the shape will develop. One thing that you should remember is that good jitai is important, but it is still possible to have a koi that has too much height, which will make the fish look short in relation to its build. However, jitai is often less prominent in koi descendant of magoi, blood, so bear in mind the background of the fish in question. Azutsu. Azutsu is the tail joint, which should be thick and strong. However, in very small koi the tail joint will tend to blend subtly into the tail, making it somewhat harder to assess. In larger koi it is better to look for a thicker azutsu. Another factor that needs to be watched is the depth of the tail joint. As a shallow tail joint can often make a female koi look overly female as it grows, and will also make the tail pipe look too thin. Carefully choosing a koi that has good azutsu can help you obtain a koi that will keep a good, strong but trim body as it approaches jumbo size. However, it is important to keep things in perspective. You get what you pay for. Cheap koi are always cheap for a reason. It may be because of a fault of some form, or perhaps the koi from small parents and has been produced for the export market, or perhaps simply because the breeder knows that the koi doesn't have a great future. The most important thing of all to remember when buying a koi, is to ask about the parents. Try to be analytical but realistic when looking for your next koi, look for an overall decent package of attributes.